Nova Scotia, Canada. Picturesque fishing villages, rocky shorelines, and the many iconic lighthouses might be the first things that come to mind. And that is true, but Nova Scotia has so much more to offer. From the highlands, forests and lakes, farmlands and valleys, to the rugged shorelines, beautiful white sand beaches, and the highest tides in the world. In this video, we will take a trip down along the coast and focus on the southwestern part of this beautiful Canadian province. We will check out some amazing spots that I visited on a recent trip back to a place I will always consider home. There is so much more to explore than what I can possibly show, but it will give you a glimpse of why this needs to be a place to consider for your next adventure. When traveling Nova Scotia, remember to get off the main highways to get the full experience. Beautiful scenery and wildlife, rich history, great food, amazing people, and a trip you won't forget. We start at the most westerly point of Nova Scotia that is known for its bird and whale watching, Briar Island and the Briar Island Lighthouse. The Bay of Fundy officially begins at this location and has the highest tides in the world. Briar Island Lighthouse is also known as Western Light and is an octagonal concrete tower. The current lighthouse dates to 1944 with the original that once stood at this location built in 1809. It is still operational today and fully automated. A very picturesque location and an amazing place to enjoy the sunset. Joshua Slocum was the first person to sail around the world alone. He set off in 1895 aboard his boat, the Spray, and completed the journey in 1898. He was Nova Scotian born and grew up on Briar Island. He disappeared at sea in November 1909. This monument stands on Briar Island, overlooking Peter Island. The Peter Island Lighthouse is an octagonal wooden tower that was built in 1909, replacing the original of 1850. This, like all other operating lights in Nova Scotia, are now automated. A good viewing point of the lighthouse is from Southern Point, where the Joshua Slocum Monument is located. The lighthouse stands at the southern entrance to the Grand Passage between Briar Island and Long Island and has helped ships navigate safely for generations. Now let's travel over to Long Island and a stop at the Balancing Rock. The Balancing Rock is a narrow vertical column of basalt overlooking St. Mary's Bay. You can take the 2.5 km round trip hike and 235 step staircase to the viewing platform. The basalt column looks to be balancing precariously on a ledge and stands about 20 feet or 6 meters tall. Basalt rock is cooled and hardened lava. The surrounding columns have eroded and fell into the sea, but this lone one still hangs on and is a remarkable sight to see. Along the trail you can also learn more about the flora and geology of this beautiful area. The Boar's Head Lighthouse is a square tapered wooden tower. Built in 1957, it is the second lighthouse on the site, replacing the original built in 1864. Remnants of the original tower foundation are still visible today. The lighthouse sits on Long Island above Petit Passage that connects the Bay of Fundy to St. Mary's Bay, and it is still operational. In 2018, a memorial was unveiled on site that lists the keepers who served at the lighthouse. Eglise St. Marie Catholic Church towers over the village of Church Point. It was built in 1903 to 1905 by 1,500 Acadian Catholic volunteers from the Church Point area. It is said to be the largest wooden church in North America in rare French Romanesque revival style. At the end of 2019, the last service was held, and its doors were closed and has stood empty ever since. Water has started to enter the structure through the deteriorating roof and needs major work. Attempts at fundraising and finding donations for the repair of the church have failed, and demolition is a real possibility. As of the date of this video, most everything has been removed from the inside, and it was deconsecrated in November 2023, and is now listed for sale. If visiting the site, access to the inside is now not possible. I previously visited in 2014, and at that time I was lucky enough to see the inside of this beautiful structure. The future of this Acadian heritage property remains uncertain.
Legend has it Smuggler's Cove was used during the American Prohibition for rum running. They used a natural cave hidden in this cove to hide their smuggled goods. During low tide, access by foot into the cave was possible and runs roughly 60 feet in. Found have been engravings of names, initials, and dates from over the years, and some interestingly are 15 feet from the ground. Possibly engraved from a small boat during high tide or the cave floor has eroded over the years. The area is a provincial park and is a great spot to stop, relax, and take in the beautiful scenery, located in the Yarmouth and Acadian Shores region. French Acadian families began settling at Cape St. Mary in 1804. Cape St. Mary Lighthouse Park sits at the edge of a rocky cliff and overlooks the Gulf of Maine near the entrance to St. Mary's Bay. In 2017, the property was taken over by the municipality of Clare and developed into a park. The lighthouse was renovated and other site improvements were made. The first lighthouse was built in 1868 and the current built in 1969. In 2018, a granite monument was unveiled commemorating those lost at sea in the municipality of Clare. Walk around the park and take in those picturesque Nova Scotian views and learn more about the history of the lighthouse and area. Cape Forshoe Lighthouse is located near the town of Yarmouth and with its unique apple core style is one of the more popular lighthouses in Nova Scotia. Climb the 77 steps into the Lantern Room where your guide will share stories and history of the area while you look out at the beautiful surroundings. The first lighthouse on site, a wooden octagonal tower, was completed in 1839. After 123 years of service, the lighthouse was showing its age and needed to be replaced. The community was assured the new tower would look close to the original, but when they saw the concrete apple core tower rise, many thought the harbour vista was ruined. Instead, it was just as popular as ever. The current tower was first lit in 1962 and stands at 23 metres, or 75 feet. Cape Forshoe was the last remaining staffed lighthouse in Nova Scotia when its keepers left in 1993. Dennis Point Wharf, located in Lower West Pubnico, has the largest fleet of commercial fishing boats in southwest Nova Scotia. It is one of the busiest fishing ports in Atlantic Canada and home to over 100 vessels. Fishermen fish for a variety of ground fish and shellfish, the majority being haddock and lobster. Fishing is a vital part of this Acadian community and is worth a stop and wouldn't be complete without trying some of the freshest seafood around. The Shag Harbor UFO incident occurred on October 4, 1967, when it was reported that an unidentified object crashed into the ocean near Shag Harbor, Nova Scotia. At the time, witnesses believed a plane crashed, but nothing was ever found. It is one of the very few UFO cases that received an official government investigation. To this day, there are many theories, and it remains one of Canada's most well-documented UFO incidents. You can stop at the UFO crash site to look out towards the ocean where the object crashed. And just a few minutes away, stop at the UFO Interpretive Centre to learn more about this famous incident. Port Mattoon is a small village on the southwest coast of Nova Scotia. Like so many small fishing villages along the coast, I always recommend getting off the highway to check them out. Just down the road is beautiful Carter's Beach. Growing up not far away, this used to be a lesser known beach and a hidden local secret. I would often come here and have this beautiful white sand beach mostly to myself. But the secret is now out and over the years it has gained popularity to now being one of the most popular beaches in the area. With the increased use, the possible damage to sensitive areas is now a concern for many. It will soon be designated as a provincial park, and hopefully the concerns about conservation will be addressed. Please remember when visiting to respect the beach and stay out of the sensitive ecological areas. There are many great lighthouses to visit along Nova Scotia's south shore, and I highly recommend following the scenic lighthouse route. The Western Head Lighthouse was built in 1962 and is an octagonal concrete tower. The lighthouse is situated along the western approach to Liverpool Bay. 
It is fully operational and automated since 1988. Fort Point Lighthouse is valued as an important part of Liverpool history. It has helped vessels navigate through the harbour since 1855 and is one of the oldest surviving lighthouses in Nova Scotia. It was decommissioned in 1989 but was saved and preserved as part of Liverpool's heritage and is now a museum and gift shop. Fort Point was a defence battery dating to the American Revolution armed with cannons built to defend Liverpool against American privateers. Walk around the grounds and the town to see and learn more about Liverpool's rich history and privateering heritage. A very unique and worthwhile stop when visiting Liverpool, Nova Scotia is Concrete Creations. It all started around 1996 for Ivan Higgins, the owner of Cosby's Garden Centre. He first started mixing concrete and creating pots and planters, which has now evolved into some of the most incredible concrete art you will see. Walk around his ever-expanding sculpture garden and be amazed at these fascinating concrete creations. A must-visit hidden gem in the area. We can't pass up a quick stop at one of Nova Scotia's major rivers along the South Shore, the Medway River. It once supported a large run of Atlantic salmon and was important as a log-driving river for the lumber industry. Port Medway was founded on a once thriving shipping industry and fishery and also had a significant boat building industry. Because of its deep sheltered harbour, it attracted large ships and big business to the area. The Port Medway Lighthouse was built in 1899 to aid navigation into Port Medway Harbour. It was decommissioned in 1989, and for around 10 years the building stood and fell into disrepair. It was decided the lighthouse should be saved as part of the area's marine heritage, and was bought by the Queen's Municipality in 2000, and soon after, restored. In most tourism advertising for Nova Scotia, one place that you will most likely get a glimpse of is the charming architecture and bright colored buildings of Lunenburg. Old Town Lunenburg is one of the best surviving examples of an 18th century British colonial settlement in North America. Established in 1753, residents have managed to preserve the town's identity through the years by preserving the architecture, buildings, and appearance. The town's economy traditionally relied on the offshore Atlantic fishery and today also tourism and the film industry. In 1995, Old Town Lunenburg was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is one of the most popular destinations in Nova Scotia. Walk along the streets that are lined with shops, great restaurants, and colorful historic buildings. Discover more down on the wharf and learn about Nova Scotia's maritime heritage at the Fisheries Museum of the Atlantic. See various vessels including the Blue Nose 2, a replica of the original world-famous racing schooner. The original Blue Nose was launched as a fishing and racing schooner in 1921 in Lunenburg, Nova Scotia. The builders created the Blue Nose to defeat the New England schooners that were dominating the international sailing circuit at that time. The crew of the Blue Nose headed to the Grand Banks off Newfoundland to fish in the summer of 1921 while focusing on its upcoming test, the International Fisherman's Cup race in October of that same year. The Blue Nose not only won the race but went on to dominate international sailing racing and went undefeated for the next 17 years. With the age of sale coming to an end, it was sold in 1942 to the West Indies Trading Company. In 1946, it struck a coral reef and sank off the coast of Haiti. In 1963, a replica of the schooner, the Blue Nose II, was built and gifted to the province of Nova Scotia in 1971. 
In 2012, the Blue Nose 2 had major restoration work done to ensure it lives on for decades to come. Swiss Air Flight 111 was on a scheduled flight from New York City, United States to Geneva, Switzerland on September 2, 1998. Southwest of Halifax International Airport, Flight 111 crashed into the Atlantic Ocean. The crash site was located close to Peggy's Cove in Bayswater, approximately 8 kilometers or 5 miles from the coast. All 229 passengers and crew perished. Vital to the recovery effort were the people of the communities of Peggy's Cove and Blanford. The Whales Back and Bayswater Memorial locations were chosen for their proximity to those communities as well as their view lines of the crash site. The modest, quiet memorials are in keeping with the coastal setting as requested by the community and family members. At the Bayswater burial site, the names of the passengers and crew are inscribed. We will end our journey around southwest Nova Scotia at one of the most popular spots in the province, Peggy's Cove, a small picturesque fishing village. There are many versions of the history and legend of how the community got its name. Some accounts say the community likely got its name from nearby St. Margaret's Bay. Peggy is a nickname for Margaret. The village marks the eastern point of St. Margaret's Bay. Another popular story claims that the name Peggy came from the only survivor of a shipwreck near the cove. Peggy's Cove Lighthouse, also known as Peggy's Point Lighthouse, is one of Nova Scotia's most well-known and most photographed. The first lighthouse at Peggy's Cove was built in 1868 and was replaced with the current lighthouse that was first lit in 1915 and still operational. Peggy's Cove gets extremely busy, especially in the summer months, but is well worth a visit. When visiting this site, stay off the black rocks and be mindful of the dangers of the coastline and the power of the ocean. High waves can occur suddenly, even on calm days. As you just saw, this area of Nova Scotia has so much to offer and is often overlooked as a travel destination. And the best thing is what I showed in this video is just a small part of what you can expect. There are so many other amazing areas in the province with their own unique character, history, and stunning scenery. In my opinion, and for many others that have traveled here, Nova Scotia is one of the most beautiful places in Canada. Take care everyone, and keep exploring.